Welcome to worship on this 4th of July weekend, uh, Independence Day here in America, and Dominion Day, we used to call it, or Canada Day in Canada, <laughs> was July 1st, the kids reminded me of while we were away, so a holiday weekend or a vacation, many folks away, and that's great. But nice to come into an air-conditioned sanctuary, we were in a big stone Gothic building last Sunday with no air conditioning, and everyone was... Whew, trying to fan themselves to stay cool. So it's great to be in this beautiful worship space this day. I want to thank the elders who led worship last Sunday, uh, and uh, especially Tim Clem bringing the message. And hey, what's up, folks? I never get an applause after the sermon. Uh, so, <laughs> Katie? Yeah, Katie's, yeah there. Katie's supposed to give me applause now. For, thank you. <laughs> Great message, and thank you for leading in worship and holding the fort down. Katie was in the office and helping making uh, worship happen last Sunday morning, but all the elders through all the aspects of worship last Sunday, and double the usual v views on YouTube for your message last uh, Sunday. Uh, Tim, that was terrific. Well, our youth will lead us uh, as we, um, as in the message, bringing you the message today around the theme of love. All you need is love. And they showed love in action in Erie, Pennsylvania. As we start the second half of 2022, do you realize that? We're halfway through the year now. We do celebrate the Lord's Supper together on this first Sunday of July. So if you didn't get one of these little cups, uh, they're on the, on the tables in the narthex, make sure you get one. There's even gluten-free if you need that. So let's now prepare our hearts for worship as uh, when you hear the sound of the bells, please stand for our call to worship. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. You, Lord, preserve life in all your creation. We take refuge in the shadow of your wings. With worship and praise.
beautiful hymn with that Americana tune. Uh, tune. Uh, uh, how's it called? Father? Faith of Our Fathers, that's it. Faith of Our Fathers is the familiar tune, but these beautiful words, Jesus, thy boundless love to me. I love that uh, near the end of the second verse. May every act, word, thought be love. So appropriate to our message today. Let us remain standing for our prayer of confession as we acknowledge our need for God's grace in our lives. And first in unison and then pause for a moment of personal prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Merciful God, you made us in your image with minds to know you, hearts to love you, and wills to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconsistent, and our obedience incomplete. We refuse to go where you lead us. We fail to grow into your likeness. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us and free us from our sin. We ask in the gracious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we have good news to share with one another on this beautiful Lord's Day. Again, some words from this hymn we just sang. O grant that nothing in my soul may dwell but thy pure love alone. O may thy love possess me whole, my joy, my treasure, and my crown. Friends, believe the good news because of Jesus Christ. I can declare to all of us, we are indeed forgiven of all our sin. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Together. Gracious God, on this special weekend of celebrations, we thank you for the freedoms that we do enjoy. Much of the world is willing to risk anything to come to this country. So help us to never take all that we have for granted. May we recognize that with privilege comes responsibility. Help us to do our part to live up to our ideals as a nation and the ideals of our faith. Help us to do all that we do in love. For love is all we need. Love for you and love for neighbor. On this day of worship, we thank you for the example of our youth who this past week were putting love into action. They fed the hungry, they improved neighborhood gardens, they played with children, and they made uh, communities and connections with people young and old. We pray for the ministry of love and hope that is ongoing at the First Presbyterian Church of the Covenant, the Sisters of St. Joseph, and the Our West Bait Front organizations. We pray for the city of Erie, Pennsylvania, as an example of all that is good about our country and all that is wrong with it. There is natural beauty and a strong sense of community for many, but it is a community where the gap between rich and poor is dramatic. There's prejudice and racism and a significant divide between rich and poor and black and white. We ask that your help to Live, uh, help us to live up to being a nation where there is justice and freedom and opportunity for all. Help us to be the beacon of hope that we can be 
in our community, a place where we can all come and seek light for our journey. We ask these things in the name of Christ. Amen. morning. Today's reading comes from Leviticus 19 verses 9 through 18. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleamings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal you shall not deal falsely, and you shall not lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal, and you shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall feel, fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall not reprove your neighbor or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No, you don't need to go far. You're going to be up again soon, so <laughs> why don't you stay right there? Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, and it, you'll notice how that Leviticus ended, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus pulled that verse out of obscurity in Leviticus and joined it to the great commandment of the Shema in Deuteronomy, which is, of course, to love your Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength. And so Jesus put those together in this verse here in these verses in Mark chapter 12. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, you'll hear from all five of our youth and Elizabeth and me this morning, uh, even the two that could not be here. They're already whisked away on family vacations after getting home Friday. Uh, but. Elizabeth will share some remarks from them as well. And uh, we had Noah and Emma Lim, and they are here today. And Cass Sant is here today. And uh, Meredith Dalrymple uh, and uh, Bowden Bob are both away on vacation. Nice little group. Um, but we had a big impact for a small group. Our week in Erie was our attempt to put the words of the greatest commandment into action. After all, words without action are just words. The loving in loving God, neighbor, and self is a verb. It's an action word. These exceptional teenagers put love in action this week in some amazing ways. On our way to Erie, we drove through Buffalo. It was a little out of the way, but it was worth it. 
We stayed on the New York, New York State Thruway with the many restrooms and <laughs> good roads. But mainly it was worth it because we stopped at the Topps grocery store that was the scene of a horrendous racist mass shooting on May 14th. We respectfully laid some flowers and meditated on the pictures of the 10 good people who lost their lives. One of the signs in the area caught our attention. It had a list with three boxes to check. It said, thoughts, check. Prayers, check. Action, blank. That sign spoke volumes. Thoughts and prayers without action are sound, starting to sound pretty hollow, aren't they? Love without action is just a word. Love is all you need was one of the Beatles' big hits, and it was our theme this week. Each day we looked at a different scripture verse about love. In addition to these two we read today from Leviticus and uh, Mark, we read verses about loving our enemies, how God's very essence is love from 1 John, and what love looks like from 1 Corinthians 13. And then finally, Colossians 3 describes how love binds everything together in perfect harmony. We read those verses and reflected on them together each evening. We're going to hear stories now from our youth about how they put love, God's love, into action. You'll hear how they served 108 people a meal that they had prepared themselves how they set up a farmer's market and cleaned up two community gardens and served meals to go and played with children and even repaired bicycles. All these to help a community in need. Because of these youth and their commitment this week, we could make a new sign. Love God? Check. Love neighbor? Check. Love in action? So Noah, why don't you go first and share love, your story of love and action this week. Okay. Um, so my favorite part of the trip was when we cleaned bikes on Friday. And these were anywhere from like simple, really cheaper bikes to mountain, to like full expensive, complicated mountain bikes. Um, this was very fun and very satisfying especially since Cass and I had the task of cleaning and polishing this beautiful dark blue bike with all this chrome. Uh, it had chrome fenders, it had chrome handlebars, and this chrome tray in the back of it. And by the time we were done, it really shined and looked really beautiful because we had to clean off a bunch of gunk and a bunch of rust, and that took a lot of time and effort. Um, but that day wasn't just about you know cleaning bikes and having fun. Um, we were on the east side of Erie, the less affluent side, mostly composed of immigrants and refugees. Those people are spread out for many, many blocks, 10 blocks, maybe more. And yet, they have to walk that distance in order to get to important meetings, telling them how to get food, or how to get a job, or money, how to get money, um, any important meetings for how to adjust li to life in America. And these aren't, these aren't virtual meetings, they have to walk to a building in order to attend these essential meetings. Uh, the organization that we're working with, the Sisters of St. Joseph, um, their goal was not to, you know, clean bikes and then repair bikes and give them out. Their goal is to also teach people how to repair these bikes on their own so when they take the, when these people, these refugees take the bikes home, uh, they're not dependent on the, their workshop for repairs. They can, go out, they can go out and repair the bike on their own. Um, I just thought that was really touching because it's like, it's, it's along the lines of, you know, if, you're, if you give a man the fish, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, and if you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. And I just thought that was very touching. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> On our first night of volunteering in Erie, Pennsylvania, 
we cooked dinners. With the help of an industrial kitchen and three large tables, we prepared and served meals for 108. It was really good Hawaiian chicken. Um, <laughs> I didn't count how many beaming smiles I saw or how many God bless yous I heard that night, but I guess it was pretty close to that number, 108, and it felt good. Of course, each and every one of us volunteers made a difference that night by feeding hungry people, but we can't just listen to this feel-good story, think, that's nice, and go on with our days. In Erie, there are over 11,000 people who are food insecure, and some organizations estimate the real number is much higher. It's a lot bigger than 108. In our country, over 33 million people are food insecure. We cannot continue to sit comfortably while so many people have no idea where their next meal is going to come from, if they're going to even have a next meal, if their children are going to starve or not. The whole point of this mission trip was to help people less advantaged than us, and we did that for a week. If we, we talk so much about love, right? We have it in the Bible, we, we talk about it in our prayers all the time, we have it on our shirts here, but millions in our country are suffering and abandoned in the gutters of our society. We cannot continue to sit placidly by. If we want to spread love, we need to dedicate our energy into improving people's lives. Um, over and over again. It is an ever-present struggle for us, but that makes it all the more important that we take it up. Mm, thank you. Amen. Sorry, I'm going to be talking about the same thing, so it might be a little repetitive, but I promise I have a point. Um, so this past week has definitely been a time of learning, reflection, and of love as we work together. The first day, we were in the church's kitchen after the morning service and doing Sunday supper. We were serving a full hot meal to whichever patrons came down into the great hall. A lot of them were homeless, some of them were financially challenged, um, and it was honestly really sobering to see so many faces, like 108 people in such a small space. Um, but honestly, I think we really came together as a team. Like one person would finish a task, and then the next would jump in to help cooking that whole meal of Hawaiian chicken and then even our own fresh concoction of brownie, cookie, and Oreo all together for dessert. Chopping chicken breasts in this giant industrial-sized chicken seemed like such a small contribution to me, but I think seeing the joy and gratitude on each person's face as I handed them their plate made it so worth it. Each God bless you and thank you so much made the hot kitchen bearable, even while we were waiting for the chicken to cook because it was taking forever. I think honestly what stuck with me the most was when we were talking after cleanup was over and Pat, the woman who was our leader for the day, said this. You know, we like to give them real plates, even if it's 10 times more work for us. Do you know why? Because it makes them feel at home, and it gives them a sense of comfort and familiarity that they might not have access to right now. And I think that really impacted me because in the long run, it's the small things that count. What we can do to acknowledge each other's humanity, even when there's such a divide in our lives. That's what this trip was about for me, spreading love in even the smallest of ways and making sure that your neighbor, even if you might have so many differences, that you make sure they're appreciated and feel loved in whatever way you can do.
This came to me in the email from Meredith Dalrymple. This past week has not only been a great experience, but an amazing learning opportunity. While creating memories and bonding with each member of the team, we were able to put our best foot forward in making small changes in hopes of creating a lasting future. Considering the last two years where our lives were consumed by a pandemic, the ability to travel once again and have the chance to open our eyes to another community was truly special. It gave a moment of reflection considering the comparison between the town we live in and the lives in Erie, Pennsylvania. I enjoyed the days where we were working in the kitchen, where we put our culinary skills to test and cooked a meal to give out to people and families. It was a bright smile that swiped each individual's faces as they thanked us for our meal and made me realize the specialty of helping others. From then on, every project we did, small and large, created a moment where I could imagine that joy on people's faces and just how much a project like that can impact people positively and use that for motivation and encouragement when finishing the week. Thank you, Meredith. And now this came from Bowdoin in the airport. <laughs> I think my favorite part of the mission trip was being able to work with people who have roots in the community. The things we did in the long run are minute compared to the work that the people in Erie will do. Getting to see how these people make a difference in their community allows us all here in Westchester to learn what we can do to help our neighbors. Hence, the best part of the trip is yet to come. All five of us have learned a lot on this trip, but that knowledge will help us to better our own community. Bowdoin. And now me. Mission trips can be very stressful. Packing up and taking a bunch of teenagers who actually haven't had much time together, often to an unknown situation with fairly inexperienced college-age leaders thrown together with a bunch of other teens from other places and often very different religious backgrounds, well, you can imagine the potential. As the teen mom of many past trips, 15 to be exact, I've been on, you. They have been tear-your-hair-out experiences, primarily navigating all of the issues with mission organizations we've gone with. This trip was quite different. We had the opportunity to take five young people from our church who got to know each other in a few meetings and outreach projects to a place we actually had been involved in, Erie, Pennsylvania. We planned the trip ourselves, from meals to work sites, rather than relying on an external organization to put it together. We served with people and places we knew and trusted and wanted to support. Our team made the most of the time. They got to know each other by working and playing together. We worked together with folks Dale and I knew from the past, and our team jumped into action. They very quickly formed a team that complemented each other. Each of them, very different from the others, found ways to work together. It was fascinating and wonderful to see them. Such a flow. Other than an occasionally momentary reaction to something, which they let go of quickly, they let each other be themselves, and team members were supportive of each other. Actually. Their interactions were better than most groups of teens that we've seen, pretty mature and thoughtful. At PCMK, our church and parents provide environments of safety and caring so that our children can grow up to be caring, thoughtful adults. And we experienced our team living in community for about a week as young adults. Of course, Dale and I have enjoyed getting to know each of them throughout the years we've been here and really would have expected nothing less. So this time, the trip brought us a lot of joy. There was a lot of laughter and time for serious reflection. With young people like ours, perhaps the world has a chance. 
These five care deeply and clearly understand that action must follow thoughts and prayers. There is hope. And I trust you will feel more hope having heard them share what they learned and how the week impacted them. Thanks, team. And thank you all for your support. Thank you, Meredith Bowden and Elizabeth. I want to take a moment and thank Katie Koch was, was a part of our team and was supportive all the way through, through all our planning meetings and getting to know one another, but through personal crisis in her life. And then it felt like, boy, we really need her to stay here and hold, hold down the fort in the office and through worship last Sunday. So thank you, Katie, for all you did to make this trip possible. We appreciate you too. This time we'll continue to worship God as we bring forward our tithes and offerings. Well, it's been good to be together and to share those stories this afternoon when we send out that uh, email blast that goes out in Sunday afternoons, sending the video for those who weren't able to be in worship. I'll include many more pictures. One went out last Thursday. Hope you saw that with about a dozen pictures. We'll send a bunch more out this afternoon. Like so many things, this was our First mission trip in three years. 2019 was the last, it's been that cycle, having lost two summers to this great experience for our young people. So I'm glad we were able to go again this year. Coming up some time of fellowship together and, uh, and then go and enjoy the rest of this beautiful weekend and uh, Independence Day celebration tomorrow. Young people from our team, won't you join me at the door and greet people on the way out? And then we remain in, for this postlude, a little, uh, tribute to Americana and a familiar melody. Now receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and all God's people said, amen. <laughs>